What's up, Lego NASCAR? Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, just getting everything finalized. Sorry that I am late. Just had some technical issues that I had to sort through. But it's all solved now. I'm here. Um, but just still making sure it works. It didn't work initially, so... But it's working now, and that's what's the matter, or that's what matters. I guess that's a better way to put it. But Texas weekend, my home track, uh, is, man, it, three good races if you ask me. Maybe it's because I was at the track. I might have been a little bit biased, and it's also my home track, and I always try to view it positively. But I thought all three races were good. Um, I'm, I've seen what the internet says on Twitter, some YouTube comments and whatnot. Um, but I'm curious to see what you guys see. Cause I have not seen the comments on my own videos. I've only seen the comments on others. So, um, yeah, just let me know what your thoughts were on the race. I'm very curious once again, to hear what the majority of people thought of this race cup series specifically. And then also the other two we'll talk about. Xfinity and truck as well. So uh, let me catch up here. Hello, David. Hope you're doing good. Uh, in between the lanes, welcome back. It's another Monday. Um, jealous that I've seen Chase Elliott one three times. Yeah, I. So for those who don't know, I was a big Jeff Gordon fan. And then Elliott took over the car, obviously. Uh, so I try. I try to keep my personal bias out of the channel for the past couple of years. I try to keep my Personal bias is out, but, you know, I have a soft spot for that team because it did used to be Jeff Gordon's team. So um, I spent a lot of years going to the track, trying to see Jeff Gordon win at Texas growing up. Never did it, but finally got to see his old team win. It was a different driver, Chase Elliott, but still uh, really cool to see if you ask me. So uh, also, man, I botched the call on Chase Elliott. I spent 10 minutes on the live stream last week talking about how bad he was at Texas and how I'd pick any other, you know, major team, any other Gibbs, Hendrick, even maybe Penske, except for Cindric over him. I was like, yeah, no, I don't see Elliott winning. Maybe a top 10, top five is even a long shot, but whew, I was, I was very wrong there. So my bad. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Uh, just had to look at the Talladega entry list. Notables are Cody Ware in the 15, SVG in the 16, Alfredo in the 62, and McLeod in the 78. Yeah, Cody Ware is back. Respectfully, Kaz Grala has done a good job in that car this year. Rick Ware Racing has taken a step forward, if you ask me. They've shown some speed at tracks that... They don't usually show any speed at. You know, Justin Haley was in the top 15 at Coda. Then he got disqualified. Uh, but, you know, they've shown some decent speed this year compared to their usual, you know, 33rd to 36th. They've shown top 25 speed at times. So I think Kaz Grahl has done great. I think Justin Haley's done great. Cody Ware, he just, I get that they have been bad and, you know, maybe this is his shot against Kaz Grala to show what he can do, but I guess I'm a doubter right now in Cody Ware. I just don't, I don't really fully understand the decision. I know why the decision was made, but I don't fully get it. But I mean, Cody Ware's got a chance to prove me wrong. I mean, we saw how wrong I was last week on this live stream saying Chase Elliott had no shot at Texas. So Cody Ware is going to go out and win Talladega next week. So uh, put the bank on it. Not, no, do not do that. That would be extremely foolish. Uh, but, yeah, I I don't know. I don't know. I just – Cash Grawl has done so good. I don't like taking a, taking races away from him if I'm Rick Ware racing. SVG in the 16, yeah, he makes his second ever um, Cup Series start of 2024. His first ever start on an oval. I was trying to say his first ever start of an oval, on an oval, second ever start, or second start in 2024. Words are hard. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how he does at Talladega in both series. He has some experience on the super speedways now with Daytona and Atlanta in the Xfinity side. So, I actually... You see, I don't think he's going to go out there and, like, lead a bunch of laps and be in the top five of the whole race just because it's Talladega, but... I think he'll make some moves, 
you know, I think he'll be up there because Colleg brings good super speedways. Um, so I think he, the top 10 is very possible. Top five is even possible. When maybe a little bit of a long shot, there might have to be some chaos, but on the Cup Series side, I'd say go for a top 10. I mean, if Ty Dillon 16th in that car, surely SVG can get a top 15. Alfredo in the 62, great to see him get that opportunity. And BJ McLeod. Get loud from McLeod, baby. BJ McLeod is racing this week. I'm really excited. Uh, obviously, the super speedways are their best shot to do anything competitive, to do anything uh, significant. So um, I'm sure it's a decent payout at Talladega, too. So uh, we'll see how they do. I think a top 25, if they can get a top 25, that's a really good day for that team. So. If B.J. McLeod can just manage the day, keep the car clean like he usually does, uh, no mechanical failures, I think top 25 is actually kind of reasonable because last few Talladega races have gotten a little bit crazy. The 2022 ones were pretty tame. 2022, it didn't get crazy. There was like a 40-lap run to end the race, and the only wreck that happened happened the last 1,000 feet. And then 2022 fall, only like four DNFs, so... It's gotten more crazy as the next gen era has gone on at Talladega. So if BJ McLeod can survive, then he can. Chevrolet swept the weekend. I did not even think about that. Yeah, Kyle Busch won the truck series race. Sam Mayer. Oh my goodness. You know, I'm, I'm sitting in, you, if you saw the video, you know where I was. But I was kind of in turn one, the entrance of turn one. And, you know, you can physically see... You know, Sam Mayer closing. You you know, I kind of use, like at Vegas, I use the words Nellis straight away to kind of measure the gap being closed. At Texas, there's no words, but like you could physically see Mayer gaining on C, gaining, gaining, gaining. And I was like, I don't think C's going to have a shot. I like the way it was looking. It looked like Mayer was going to get him with two or three to go. And I had kind of given up hope. But man, oh man, Sieg, uh, he didn't do great in one and two, but he, he did enough. And then three and four, Sam Mayer almost just completely missed the turn. And Sieg all of a sudden was like, it, it was his golden ticket. It, it's his opportunity again. And that was one of the coolest finish I've witnessed. Um, I've seen some photo finishes at Talladega, yes, but that's Talladega. It's almost expected, especially in the Gen 6 at the end there. There was always a photo finish, so it was kind of the thing. But that was so cool, so epic. Uh, that was heartbreaking for Seek. I'm trying to get some. I know I've got something in my bag. It's, it's just water. Just You got to stay hydrated. Um, but... No, I felt so bad for Sieg there. Obviously, that's a great run. They were in the top 10, even the top five at times for the majority of the day. So they were genuinely fast. Um, but the fact that they had taken the lead, they had run out a little bit, a second ahead of Mayer with five to go or however many it was, and uh, was fighting for the win with a JRM car. That's a big deal for that team. So a second place, obviously nothing to be ashamed about. But when you are literally inches away from your first ever Xfinity Series win, it's it's almost soul crushing. So uh, Ryan Sieg handled himself perfectly after the race. He did great in his interviews. Um, you could tell the disappointment. So he did fantastic, but ultimately just literally missed out by literally guys this much. Missed it by that much. Um, and I'm also glad that he didn't just obliterate Mayer off of four. Um, like, don't get me wrong, if he wrecked Mayer and, you know, C gets his first win, oh, it's so cool, but at the same time, it's like, you know, oh, he kind of wrecked him, but, you know, it's, it's for a win, you know, cool. But to see it kind of play out like that, to see it play out clean, um, that was cool to see, and it makes it a little bit more iconic, if you ask me. And then uh, the third one, Chase Elliott snapped his winless streak, yeah. What was it, 42 races without winning, and he wins. Uh, and uh, so many people give Alan Gustafson crap about making bad calls. Well, guess what? Alan Gustafson saved the day yesterday. Uh, they qualified 24th, had a bad qualifying effort, and they made an aggressive strategy call to stay out long in that first stage on that first pit cycle, an extra 10, 15 laps, however many it was. 
and they were betting on a caution. They would have been back in the mid-20s had it not been for a caution, but they gambled, and the gamble paid off thanks to former Hendrick Motorsports driver Jimmy Johnson spinning out. That got them in the top 10, and really that was where they were the rest of the day. They were from really 5th to 7th for the first half of the race after that caution, but then top 5 after the Larson penalty and issue, you know, when his tire flew off, um, even when things got shuffled up and there were different strategies. And that was a fun aspect of the race, if you ask me, all the different strategies. Um, but, you know, Elliott was able to be in the top five for a good chunk of the race. So that was the best he's ever run in Texas, at the new Texas at least. And, yeah, he needed a little bit of help with Larson's wheel falling off and Hamlin wrecking himself. Well, Elliott was clear of Hamlin by the time they got to three, but – um, Hamlin wrecking himself, uh, the, you know, the whole pit situation with Reddick, and then just there was a lot that had to go his way, cautions, whatnot, but, you know, it's a Cup Series win. It's been a long time since he's won, and it was cool to see him do the tribute to Kowicki, uh, obviously the same sponsor. That was Hooters' first win since 92, right? 92, yeah. Uh, so it was cool to see him do the Polish victory lap. Uh, I could, I picked up on it pretty quick once he started turning around and turns one until I was like, oh, he's doing a Polish victory lap. And then it clips. It was like, oh, yeah, the sponsor, the connection. It was a really cool moment. So glad I got to see it. Glad I got to capture it on camera and for you, the Internet. So uh, also, thank you. Videos have done really good this weekend. I think all but one video hit a thousand views. The Larson poll video is like 20 views away. So, you know, it's basically there. But uh Thanks for the support all weekend. Uh, the SVG video is always a success, it seems. So, uh, but also just you know the Xfinity finish, the Truck Series race got a lot of viewers, and then uh, even yesterday the Cup Series race a lot of viewers. So, uh, thanks for supporting the channel, everyone. Subscribed, unsubscribed, not subscribed, uh, first time, whatever it may be. So thanks. Uh, back to the comments. I'm very far behind because I've been rambling a lot because I I just didn't get to talk about the race. This week, I didn't do my normal recap. Usually I do the recap and, you know, we kind of touched on things there. And so I make it short here, but we didn't get to talk about the race, you know, so we're doing it all here. Uh, Rowdy got win number 66 Friday night. Yeah, he was the, he might not have been the best truck. He might've been marginally behind someone else. Like Ekis was really good. Uh, Sanchez early on looked like he was better, but as the night got on, he fell back a little bit and not even that far he was still in the top five and then late Corey Heim was better but Kyle Busch was just able to hold him off and massive respect to Heim for not just obliterating um Kyle Busch into turns three and four he could have bumped and run him he could have wrecked him but Corey Heim showed a lot of maturity there which I respect a lot considering the truck series championship last year uh and he kept it clean he kept it honest he said second place all right We'll take it. You know, we got a 3.3 average finish this year. We'll take another top five, get this regular season championship and all that. So, um, yeah, really good run for Haim, obviously, too. But Kyle Busch has been a while since he's won a race, it feels like. So, um, well, that I think that was the second truck race of the year that he's won. So, maybe not. But uh, just with how bad RCR has been to start out this year, it's felt like, you know, it's been a while. But... Uh, he got a top 10 in the cup race, too. So good weekend overall for Kyle Busch, other than wrecking it in practice. Uh, I'm, uh, let's see here. You took the lead back in fantasy, says in between the lanes. I guess we can check the fantasy standings. I'll do that in a minute. I just got the tab pulled up, though, just in case. I was checking in on fantasy during the race, and at one point you took the lead. Yeah, that was right after stage one. I know when you're talking about it's because I had Larson, Reddick, Hamlin, Bubba, and Blaney, and all of them scored stage points in stage one, I think. And obviously, Larson won the stage and was running first place. So uh, everything was going great there in the first stage for my fantasy team, but it quickly just tanked. So uh, I'm curious to see how far I fell. I think I was six last week. Hello, Jeff. I uh, hope you're doing well. Paint schemes I like this week. The nine car was pretty. The Hooters colors this year are really good. I wish, though, that you see... They, they initially, the renderings was like a burnt orange, which is a Texas fan. I was like, oh, that's perfect. But it's much brighter in person and even like on TV and stuff. 
but it's still a really, really pretty race car. Maybe his best primary this year for Chase Elliott. Um, Hamlin's Yahoo car, he's had that for a few years, but still it pops on the track. The purple really stands out. So that was one that, you know, you could see all day. I love Tyler Reddick that they don't just do the monster scheme in the more. They do the beast unleash or whatever it is, and they actually change the paint scheme a little bit, and that's really cool. The uh, kind of green on black. And then let's see, any others uh, that were like significantly just mind-blowing. Um, Chastain just ran his normal scheme. Um, uh, the 10 car, the overstock looked cool, but I saw that with Barry at Coda. So, you know, I kind of knew what to look for. Uh, the interstate batteries car on Gibbs always stands out. The 19 was bright and orange. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any just like, I mean, I think I covered some of the best ones really. Bubba's Columbia scheme looked really good on track. Um, so yeah, I mean, those are probably my favorites there. Let's see here. Didn't see the whole Xfinity race, but Chastain was in the booth with Lugano. Yeah, I heard a lot of people really liked Ross Chastain in the booth from what I read and from what I heard. Um, I didn't record the race. I probably should have, but, uh, yeah, I just, I heard really good things about Chastain. I heard Lugano in the booth. I think Lugano does a good job in the booth, so... Uh, to pair him with a different driver, you know, we've heard Logano, Blaney, Logano, Keselowski. So to pair him with another driver, it's a good idea. Have some fun with it. Uh, but ultimately, I did not hear it. So I don't think I could give a, a fair opinion on it. Can't wait to see SVG's Wendy's car for a 16 cup and 97 Xfinity car. Yep, he's doing an all Wendy's weekend. They already posted a promotional video of him dipping French fries into a chocolate shake as is tradition. But yeah, I don't know what they're going to look like. I'm just as curious as you are. This was one of the best Texas weekends we've had since the repave, in my opinion. This is Lego NASCAR. Lego NASCAR, I like you. Okay, here's why. The truck race, it got a little dull at times, yes. But overall, when Kyle Busch was not gapping the field by five seconds, there was actually some racing going on. We saw Nick Sanchez up there. We saw Christian Eckes, Corey Heim, some different guys, but, you know, the normal truck series guys who we expect to see up front. Um, it got a little crazy there at times. You know, right at the beginning, we had three or four wrecks, and it was just like, okay, guys, it's like lap 10, lap 15, and we've had three cautions already. Let's back it down, okay? But ultimately, we had a fun finish. It was an exciting finish. It was an all right truck race. Nothing insanely exciting, but, you know, not boring at all either. So as for the Xfinity race, the Xfinity race was great. Uh, yes, all guys swept the stages, led a ton of laps, but he never really fully checked out, I feel like. He never got to a five, six, seven second lead. But the one time he got a big lead, like he started losing it once he hit like three or four seconds, and Riley Herbst was fast. Herbst was catching up to him. Brandon Jones even at times was catching up to him, and it was really fun to watch, and then finally Herbst catches up to him after the green flag pit stops, and freaking Allgaier just wrecks a lap car. I mean, not intentionally. He just had pressure from behind, and he looks up. There's a lap car, and he gets put in an awkward spot, but it's just like, Allgaier, what, what just happened there? And ultimately, I mean, that's what created the late race chaos and the late race you know the crazy finish um was the different strategies guys staying out guys taking two and that's what created the situation for ryan sieg and sam Mayer to have a shot at that win is justin allgaier who really dominated the day was finally getting pressured late in this race and he wrecks a lap car and that's what caused the crazy finish so i thought the xfinity series race was great uh there was never a dull moment uh, there was racing going on throughout the field. There was always someone side by side. Once that second lane kind of kicked in pretty quick in the race, you know, the truck race, it took a bit for the second lane to come in, even the cup race. But in the Xfinity race, it was pretty quick that the second lane developed and, you know, things were always going on. So um, it was a great race, if you ask me, and had a fantastic finish. Cup, uh, cup was a good race. That's this year and last year honestly have been the best races since the repave or the reconfiguration. I remember that 
first or second race since the reconfiguration, like the one of the first ones there. It was a pretty good race, but just since then, it's just been really bleh. I don't know how else to say it. I think it was the first one that was really good, and then the second one, Harvick led like every lap. Don't even remember what happened in the spring of 18 and I was there. <laughs> Fall of 18, Harvick dominated again. I mean, I can't think of a better race than what we've had the last two. It gets a little chaotic. It got a little too wrecky for me there at the end. There were too many wrecks, but overall it was a great race if you ask me. Uh, you had different guys up front. You had a lot of different strategies, which really made things exciting, which led to a lot of different guys up front. Uh, obviously, we saw Chase Elliott get his first win in 42 races, but we saw Denny Hamlin up front, Tyler Reddick. Obviously, Kyle Larson dominated early. We saw Harrison Burton lead seven laps. We saw Todd Gilliland up front. We saw Michael McDowell up front, Ross Chastain. Uh, Daniel Suarez snuck up there with the top five late in this race. So we saw a lot of different guys up front, which made for an exciting race. And you you never really knew who was going to win this race. Um, you could have guessed, and you know, late in this race, it definitely seemed like it was going to be Reddick or Hamlin, but when that caution happened with 30 or so to go, Elliott goes three wide for the lead, which was a great move by him on that restart. Um, it was kind of like, okay, you know, what's going to happen here? I'm not sure what's going to happen because Hamlin was clearly better. Uh, and when Hamlin got by, I thought he was going to run away from Elliott, but he didn't. Elliott was able to stay within half a second of him. Uh, and then obviously Keselowski on the fresher tires was catching up. And I thought it was going to go green to the end. I thought Keselowski, once he got by Elliott, I thought for sure he was going to get to Hamlin. And I kind of thought something crazy was going to happen between those two just because Brad hasn't won in a while. Um, but it's not what happened. <laughs> it, it, it's uh, Stenhouse or someone spun with 12 to go and created all the late race chaos. So... Yeah, it was. It got a little hectic there at the end, but I thought it was a really good race. The best top two, maybe last fall was better, uh, but a top two race since the repave reconfiguration. Not the best Texas race I've been to, but maybe the best since the reconfiguration on the cup side of things. Um, scroll, scroll, scroll. A lot of messages retracted. Tyler Gafal 2022 was Chase Elliott's last win. Yeah, I was there for that one too. So I've been at his last two wins. There you go. Uh, Courtney made it interesting against Kyle Busch at the end of that truck race. Yeah. As I said earlier, Haim really put the pressure on him, but massive respect to Haim for keeping it clean, keeping it respectful there at the end. Uh, yeah, covered that. Uh, we covered the paint schemes, Logano triple A paint scheme. Yeah. It's like, I get that they've always run the triple A paint scheme at Texas, but it's kind of funny because, you know, they're sponsored by auto trader and this was an auto trader sponsored race and they didn't run the auto trader scheme. So whatever boats their float or whatever the saying is. Uh, Dean Thompson always seems to have bad luck. Uh, always in the middle of a crash, it seems. Dean Thompson. What I remember the I remember he was in a wreck because he was getting lapped or you know he pitted something like that. I just can't remember the exact wreck. Um, Freightliner and Kubota, Kubota, where whatever they're called, the tractor company that sponsors Trackhouse. Uh, they were good as well. Yeah, uh, the Freightliner scheme on the 21 is just weird to me. The 21, I think of old-fashioned, you know, the 21, the iconic gold 21 Motorcraft Ford. It's weird to see the, the blue and black on it, I will admit. It looks great. It's a great paint scheme. It's just weird to see on the 21. When it's on the 2, I'm all for it. But when it's on the 21, it, it freaks me out a bit. And look, Oh, speaking of things that freak me out... Watching Jimmy Johnson in the number 84 Toyota race Kyle Busch in the RCR number 8, that was, I got shivers. And like the terrified I'm in the middle of a horror movie shivers. Ooh, that was frightening. Um, I don't I don't want to see that again. I mean, not really. I'll, I'll be fine if I see it again. But it was, 
Oh, that was so freaky. It was, oh, oh, God almighty. That just, it freaked me out. It was weird. It was weird watching it. I don't know how I feel about it, but. <sighs> Denny got loose going for the lead. Okay. Turn four was the trouble spot on Sunday. And do you know where I was sitting? I was sitting right there in turn four. So I got Denny wrecking himself. I got that on footage. I got that. I went, the crowd went crazy for that. McDowell wrecking himself. I got that on video happened right in front of me uh christopher bell so the christopher bell one when christopher bell wrecked himself and bowman and nemechek decided to you know spin out as well i was recording blaney and larson for the lead because blaney was had stayed out he was on older tires and you know larson's going for the lead so i figured all right let's do it let's record it get the camera out start recording because they're fighting for the lead and you know i want to see a pass for the lead get it for you the people who are going to watch the video and so here they come down the front stretch. All is good. You know, no side by side yet, but you know, they're still going. And then all of a sudden, my friend who I'm sitting with just starts tapping me on the shoulder. And I'm like, what are you tapping? And I look, I see smoke go down to Bell. Bell's rear end is destroyed. And then all of a sudden, there goes Boom, and there goes Nemechek. Everyone's wrecking, and I'm freaking out like, oh my God, like what just happened? Everyone's dying here. Uh, but. Yeah, and then the McDowell one was fresh off a restart. The Hamlin one was obviously fresh off a restart. The Hamlin one was almost bizarre because, like, McDowell, even the McDowell, it was almost the exact same one as McDowell. When Bell lost it, he was by himself. But Elliott was on the bottom. Hamlin was on the top. Chastain was on the bottom. McDowell was on the top. And they were just right there to where they could almost get him on the right rear but not quite, but just something disturbed the cars and they hit the bump and that magic combination just sent cars spinning and wrecking. I, I couldn't explain it. I, I don't know how to explain it because I don't drive the cars. I am not on the surface, but there was something about that spot that just really messed with the cars, really messed with everything going on. So... I don't know what to tell you. Um, let's see. Kyle Larson lost his right rear wheel. Fun, funny story about that. So it was a caution and, you know, I had to go to the bathroom. So I ran down, went to the bathroom, came back up. And I start walking back up because I was, I was pretty high up. So I had to walk up 30 rows or so or 15, 20. Maybe it wasn't 30. I was in row 48, 49, something like that. Um, so I'm walking up and all of a sudden I hear cheering and clapping and I'm like, it's not green. What are they cheering? And so I turn around, I look at the big screen and Larson's wheels just scampering off on its own, living its own life. And so now Kyle Larson is suddenly goes from guy who's about to lead all but 20 laps of this race to oh God, he's two laps down and he's going to finish in the 20s or 30s. And that's what happened. He was able to get back on the lead lap before the end of stage two, but he still finished in the 20s because I think they did some damage to the underside of the car. So that was crazy. That was one of the most chaotic moments of the race. That was like when the race was open. As I said earlier, you know, that was when the race really opened up and you didn't know who was going to win. Um, obviously, as I said, Reddick was fast. Hamlin was fast. Elliott was fast, but he wasn't as good as the Toyotas, in my opinion. Um, but you figured, you know, oh, if, you know, some chaos happens or, you know, a late race restart, and that's ultimately what happened. Um, but Gibbs was still fast. Uh, Bubba was fast when he was up front. But Blaney was fast fast but then he kind of fell off a little bit then he got wrecked and that was ultimately it for him oh man i was so glad to not be watching commercials someone said uh josh barry brought out the caution during the commercial it was funny because during cautions i would get on twitter see what people are saying about the race seeing what penalties are happening that i missed or any other small details and every time there was a caution it'd be right after the caution you know the field gets bunched up and i get on the internet and everyone's complaining, can't see the can't see the caution because there's a commercial. And I'm sitting here like, oh, what a shame. As I sit in the grandstands watching the cars crash each other or 
watch the replay for the 15th time of whoever spun out spinning out, but yeah. There's a certain spot on the track where the driver spun. Yeah, everyone was talking about the word of the weekend was sketchy. Everyone talked about how sketchy the track was. So ultimately, people were just hitting bumps. It was hard to hold your line. If you got out of line, you spun out. And I mean, that's ultimately what Texas has been since the replay because the turns are so different. And then as the tracks aged, it's gotten more bumpy and the bumps are really hard. So they're going to have to smooth it out a little bit. I don't want them to completely smooth it out if they're not going to repave it and reconfigure it, but you got to do something there or else we're going to keep wrecking cars and these team owners, they don't want to see their cars wrecked at Texas as if it's Talladega. So uh, ultimately, I, I think they'll do something, but I don't think they'll do anything too extreme. Trouble pit stops with Gibbs and Truex having loose wheels. Yeah, that kind of really hurt Ty Gibbs' day because he was – that first run, Larson and Gibbs absolutely gapped the field. Larson was staying about a second to a second and a half ahead of Gibbs, but then it was like four and a half, five seconds from Gibbs back to Bell. I think it was Bell or Reddick. Uh, Bell and Reddick were like right next to each other for a few laps, so – uh, I can't remember who exactly was third. I'm pretty sure it was Bell holding up Reddick. But, um, yeah, it it sucked for both of them. It just kind of messed up their strategy, messed up their day. And with all the alternate strategy calls, you get stuck in traffic. Now, at one point, Gibbs got forced up the track and kind of fell to the back. So Ty Gibbs, just <laughs> they had a rough day. There was a fire in the pit stall, two away from them. Um, there was getting shoved up the track, there was the loose wheel, like Ty Gibbs, after such a good qualifying effort, after that first stint running really, really fast, it just so quickly fell apart for Ty Gibbs, so uh, ultimately I felt bad for him, but speaking of pit road issues, oh my goodness, 2311 racing, what are you made fun of for 2311 racing? You bring fast cars, almost every single week. You have two drivers who have proven they can win races. <sighs> but you get made fun of because of your pit stops. When it's a late race pit stop and there's a 2311 car with a chance to win, oh, nope, nope, this isn't happening. Not this week. Oh, chance at a top five finish? Throw it away. <sighs> it nearly happened again. You, Some might argue it technically did happen again, but, you know, Reddick let Elliott go three wide of him on that restart, so you could argue Reddick was partially to blame. Uh, but, no, they had the lead, six-second lead or whatever it was, and it's like, all right, guys, you cannot mess it up this badly. Like, you'd have to really mess it up. They really messed it up. Denny Hamlin took the lead, but Tyler Reddick was a better car. Uh, he was driving better that day, and... He took the lead back pretty quickly, like within 10 laps. And uh, that's something that I appreciated yesterday. You know, usually at this new Texas configuration, we've seen instances where the better car, it takes them like 30, 40 laps to get a pass where they never make the pass. But Reddick was clearly better than Denny Hamlin. He was able to get to that second line and he was able to make the pass fairly quickly. It was still difficult. Hamlin stay, still played defense until... He didn't. Like, when Reddick passed him, I swear, it was like Hamlin just waved him by. But uh, what do I know? Um, Jimmy Johnson battling Kyle Larson freaked you out. Yeah, that was a little weird, too. Jimmy Johnson's old car uh, fighting Kyle Larson, or Jimmy Johnson's old car driven by Kyle Larson fighting Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, I guess we'll check the fantasy standings now comments have slowed so i will get on the fantasy website and read you guys the fantasy standings if you want to join we had a new member join this week uh, but if you guys want to join the fantasy league that we do for fantasy nascar feel free to join it's a fun time we have a, a good time with it it's nothing too intense nothing too insane it's purely for fun so uh now feels like a good time to debut my second so this is a new hat 
if you can't tell. They had one like this at Coda, and I regretted not getting it. So I said, we're doing it this week. We're getting it at Texas. But my second new hat, I got this one on Friday. Um, I told you guys, I, I'm trying to diversify my hat game in terms of drivers. And I told you, I wanted this driver's hat really bad. I really did. I don't have a lot of Ford hats in my lineup. I only have Busher, I think. Well, now I have two Ford hats because I got myself a Todd Gilliland hat. Todd, he's, he ran great on Sunday. Uh, he ran, what did he run? Top five for a good portion of the race. You know, call it strategy, whatever. He genuinely was staying up there in the top five. McDowell was up there in the top five. Um, he was in the top 10 for probably the majority of the race, but they had a penalty late. They had, they had a bunch of things go wrong in the last 45 laps of this race. They should have had a top worst, but ultimately too many penalties, too many issues on pit road, um, cost them a bad, a uh, good finishing result. And it just kind of killed their day, which really just sucked to see because they, they had the speed there. They had the strategy calls there, but uh, they had nothing to show for it. So next week at Talladega, Todd's been great on the super speedways this year. Led a bunch of laps in the 500, led a ton of laps at Atlanta. Uh, so I I think Todd Gillen, he's going to be an underdog odds-wise, but I think that's a he's going to be – he's got a shot at this thing this week. He's got a genuine shot at winning Talladega. All right, fantasy standings. We have a new leader. He has led before, but it's a new leader. Zerkman, 95, retakes the lead. He has a six point, just six points between Z Zerkman, 95, and Big Hat LJ. Dan, the Jets fan, is still in third. It Factor Autosport Incorporated, still in fourth. Dr. Zero is in fifth. PC underscore 18 is in sixth. Oh, I only fell one spot to seventh. I'll take it. I will. I'll, I'll gladly take it. Eighth place was Pins underscore 22. Ninth place is Hell on Wheels 24. Tenth place is RT Racing. Eleventh place Otter Bear 8. Twelfth place 43 and 2311 fan. Thirteenth place Matt Smith 53. Fourteenth is Stevie G. Fifteenth is Shane Van Hamburger Buns. Sixteenth is Micah MLB 15. Seventeenth, our new entry is Tyler Hernandez. So uh, once again, if you want to join, Go ahead. Uh, it's free to join. There's no incentives. There's no buy-in or anything. It's purely for fun, just for entertainment, just for whatever. You know, it's just it's just for fun. You can make your lineup Rick Ware and BJ McLeod and whoever you want this week. If you finish last, no one's going to laugh at you. This is genuinely for fun. So, um, yeah. Speaking of, uh, what will I do with my fantasy roster this week? This is one of those weeks that you go a little bit more aggressive since it's Talladega and chaos can happen. This is when you don't use a Larson, a Truex. Um, you might use a Hamlin or a Blaney just because they're both really good super speedway racers, but this is a chance. Todd and I will probably be in my lineup this week. Jamie Cloud in there just for fun. But ultimately, I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. Um, as I said, probably both front row cars just so I can use them up. And then I'll put McDowell in at the road courses, obviously. Um, I may put SVG in there, but uh, I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Eric Jones is always a good super speedway racer. Uh, I might put him in there. I feel like I want to lean more towards Ford because they haven't won a race in quite a while. They haven't won a race this year. And it just feels like they're due. And also it feels like if they were to win a race, it would be this race. So I might just go all in on Ford this week. Put the front row cars in there. Put me in there. Um, you know, put Cendric in there even. He's a really good super speedway racer. Uh, so I might just go all in on Ford, hope that they can do something, throw an SHR gar guy in the garage, and then just pray. This week's fantasy lineup will be straight prayers. 
Uh, Gilliland's Long John Silver Scheme. Yeah, that was a pretty car. Uh, that was, I felt like a throwback in a sense because I think they've had a Long John Silver's car in front row before, but I don't know. Not NASCAR related, but how do you feel about the Thunder being number one seed in the West? Well, I'm a Thunder fan, so I'm extremely happy. I'm curious to see who we play, though. I'd rather it not be the Lakers because the Thunder just don't match up well with the Lakers. Just the size disadvantage hurts there and then just I don't I think we played three times in the regular season we might have gotten swept we might have won one in Oklahoma City but I'm really excited playoff thunder or playoff basketball is back in Oklahoma City for the thunder um hopefully they can make a run but they're really young and not a lot of playoff experience but hopefully they can do something just at least get out of the first round that's my only request but you know, it'd be cool to see him do something. I'm a Knicks fan. They play winner of the Sixers Heat. Yeah, Knicks have been good this year. It's weird to say that in the 21st century, but the Knicks have been good this year. We'll see what they can do. It's going to be hard to beat Boston, ultimately, in the East. Um, but you never know. It's the NBA playoffs. Crazier things have happened. I feel like Elliot runs pretty well at super speedways whenever he's not caught up in a wreck. He's been... So, Gen 6, he only had the one win at Talladega. But Gen 7, the next-gen car, he's... For some reason, he's got that figured out at the super speedways. He ran top five at Daytona last year. He won at Talladega two years ago. He won it two years ago. I don't know why, but he just, he's got something figured out about this next gen car at the super speedways. He's not dominating or anything, and I still don't think he's as good as Blaney on the super speedways. Not even, maybe not even Bubba or Hamlin, but he's got something figured out. I think he's, in the next gen era, he's probably a top five super speedway racer. That might be debatable, but he's got something figured out there. I don't know why, but I still think Blaney is the. See, Hamlin in the Gen 6 was, like, something different. You know, he won those two Daytona 500s. He won a couple of Talladega races, and he really had it figured out. But the Gen 7 hit, and it's just like he can't do all that he did in the Gen 6, and so he hasn't been able to really control the race like he usually does. Whereas Blaney has figured out the transition. He was able to win in the Gen 6 three times, twice at Talladega, once at Daytona. And here in the next gen era, he he's won at he almost won a Daytona 500. He won at Talladega last fall. It, I don't I don't know why, but Blaney's just he's got the super speedways figured out. Sure, he gets caught up in a wreck every once in a while, but he he, he he's got it figured out. Um, picking Kyle Larson. David, that is a bold strategy considering Kyle Larson is either wrecking or finishing 19th with a damaged race car at these super speedways. Larson will run up front at the super speedways and he always gets caught up in either stuff or he wrecks the field doing it like he did in this race two years ago. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how he does i would not pick him to win i'm not putting him in my fantasy lineup but we'll see kyle bush is the defending talladega spring winner yeah i was there for that one last year we'll see i don't know what to expect with that team they've been so up and down but i guess we'll see it's too hard it feels too hard to predict Weather's not looking good for Talladega this weekend. We might be looking at a Monday race, guys. I'm looking up the weather here, and um, it's, not looking good. it's just not looking good. Friday, rain. Saturday, rain. Sunday, rain. Monday, no rain. So you got that going for you. So far, it's been Hendrick versus Gibbs. Yep, Hendrick and Gibbs have won all but one race. And it was Daniel Suarez, of all people. No disrespect to Daniel Suarez, but if you told me through nine 
10 races, however many races we've had this year, nine or 10, it's one of those numbers. If you told me Hendrick and Gibbs have won all but one, you have to pick the guy who didn't win. Here's the names I would have listed before Daniel Suarez. Tyler Reddick probably would have been my top choice. Ryan Blaney would have probably been my second choice. Logano would have probably been my third. Then I would have gone Bubba fourth. Then I would have gone, no, I, I'd put Chastain third or fourth. Chastain's in there. Okay, you know what? We're not going to order this. Let's just name some names. Reddick, Chastain, uh, Blaney, Logano, Bubba. Um, let's see here. I don't think I would have named Stuart Hosh racing driver before Suarez. I might have named Brad or Bush Busher before Suarez. I would have named quite a few drivers before Daniel Suarez. No disrespect to Suarez once again, but he just, he won. He won a race, so it's just how it is. Justin Haley, that could be a good underdog pick, but ultimately we'll see, obviously. Truex Jr. That is true, but me and Martin Truex Jr. have the same amount of super speedway wins in the Cup Series in our career. So... Am I doing it again? Is is I'm going to talk about, let, let's see if this works again. Last week I talked about how bad Chase Elliott was at Texas and he wins Texas. Well, let me tell you about how bad Martin Truex Jr. is at Super Speedways. He's been in the Cup Series 15, 16, 17 years. No Super Speedway wins. He got really close to the Daytona 500 in 2016. Other than that, 2018 Daytona summer, he finished second. I can't think of another that he ran up front and was like had a genuine shot for the win on the last lap. I'm trying to think. This is I'm genuinely thinking here. Daytona. Nope, can't think of anything. Even that Daytona race where he had to try to point his way in, he was fighting for like eighth with Cody Ware or something. Um Talladega, I don't think he's ever... I think he's won some stages at Talladega, but he always gets wrecked. So I can genuinely only think of two times when Martin Truex Jr. had a shot at the win on the last lap of the Super Speedway. He is a Cup Series champion. He's a future Hall of Famer. He's won in all types of tracks. He's won Richmond, Martinsville, uh, Charlotte, um, Auto Club, Pocono, like all these different tracks that are, you know, it takes a real talented driver to win all these different types of tracks, but the super speedways, he is like cursed at. Him and Larson just can't get it done at the super speedway. So uh, Kyle Busch, he had a long drought there. It was about 15 years between his Talladega wins. So maybe, maybe we'll see another drought broken. Uh, this weekend. If I had to bet on a drought being broken this weekend, I would bet on Keselowski ending his winless streak, but that's just me. Bowman? Um, Bowman at Talladega. <sighs> um, that's tough because Bowman's never won at a super speedway. Bowman's just, I can't think of any time that Bowman's really been in contention for a win at a super speedway. I guess this year's Daytona 500, he was, he finished second. So you could argue that one. But I'm struggling to think of another time where Bowman's really been like top tier to super speedway. Uh, two of his teammates have won. Elliott's won Talladega a couple times. Byron's won at Daytona. And obviously, they both won Atlanta. But Larson, once again, bad at super speedways. Uh, but Bowman, um, maybe. I don't know. Hendrick's on a hot streak here. You could figure he's the last guy who needs to win to get into the playoffs. You know, he needs a win. It's been a couple of years. Maybe he gets something done. Uh, but I guess we'll see. I guess we will see. Can't forget about Prosper Texas' own Chris Busher. Could be a good pick this weekend. In between the lanes, you know wheel, as the internet says. Chris Busher on the super speedways, he has led a ton of laps. He won at the Daytona last fall. And 
He's won some stages at Talladega. Even in the Gen 6 era, he was winning some stages at Talladega. So Chris Buescher is going to be a good pick. I mean, let's let's be honest. There's, okay, I got to think of how I phrase this. There's no bad pick at Talladega. I mean, there technically is. Like, if you pick BJ McLeod to win at Talladega or Anthony Alfredo, you will more than likely be wrong. But at the same time, it's Talladega. You never know what's going to happen. As for if you get into the Todd Gillens, the Ricky Stenhouse Juniors, the the Ryan Priests, they are going to be long shots odd-wise, but there's a realistic shot that they could win. Front rows won at Talladega before. Front rows almost won at Talladega a few more times. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has won at Talladega. JTG Doherty's won at a super speedway. Like, those are realistic long shots. Um, so the field's kind of divided into chunks, but in the next-gen era, as much as we talk about these long shots winning or having a chance to win, at Talladega specifically, we have not seen that. Daytona is a different story. We've seen Austin Dillon, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Austin Sendrick, which he's in a Penske car, but, you know, it was his first ever start as a full-time driver. Whereas Talladega, the winners in the next gen era have been Kyle Busch, Chase Elliott, uh, Ryan Blaney, and Ross Chastain. All guys who are in cars that can win each and every week. So we can talk about these long shots. It's fun to think about. It's fun to see if they can actually get it done when they have the shot. But ultimately, it's probably going to be... Uh, It'll probably be a uh, it'll be a favorite like Chris Busher will be in that favorites category if I had to guess. Always a wild card at super speedways. Yeah, as I said, it's we talk about the long shots, we talk about the wild cards, we talk about the playoff bubble bursters, the playoff bracket busters. You know, Suarez messed up mine, and he's not really a long shot. You know, I had him in my first four out, I think. So, um, realistically, if it were to happen, I think it would be a front row, either Todd Gillen, Michael McDowell, or Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Harrison Burton's a, he's a case because he led a lot of laps in this race last year. He did really good in this race last year before he got wrecked out of the lead. And he, he's riding a little bit of momentum. Let's be honest here. He led seven laps at Texas Motor Speedway. He made an impressive three-wide move for the lead at Texas Motor Speedway. They got a little confidence now. They got a little momentum. Everyone wants to see that Wood Brothers 100th win. Harrison Burton's seat is in question. What if, you know, a win cures everything. Why not Harrison Burton, you know? But uh, my way too early pick, it's not way too early, but my early pick for Talladega, as I said, as much as we want to talk about these underdogs, you know, it's a wild card race. This is a chance for some guys who won't make the playoffs. This is a chance to make the playoffs. As much as we talk about them, look at history in this track in the next gen era. It's a short history. It's a small sample size, but... They're all guys who make the playoffs consistently. They end up winning a race or two later in the year at a more normal track. Chastain, Elliott, Bush, Blaney. Ultimately, I think it will be one of those guys. But my pick, I, I think Keselowski ends the winless streak. He made the playoffs last year. It's been two full seasons at RFK without a win. The super speedways, he's a great super speedway racer. RFK, the super speedway program had been figured out. Uh, but the past couple of races at the super speedways, they haven't been as strong. But I don't really have much logic. But I think Brad Keselowski, he's kind of, he's he'll be in that favorites to small long shots category and that's my way too early pick Brad Keselowski I think I just pick him at every Talladega race at this point just I kind of hope it sticks at one of these points it's kind of like Larson at Darlington I picked him to win the Southern 500 for like five straight years it took to year five for it to finally become right but 
one of these times it's going to stick. One of these times, you know, a blind squirrel finds a nut, so it's a guess. It's always a guess at Talladega, but uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for watching the uh, live stream. I'm going to wrap it up here, but it was a fun time. It was a good time. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys again for the support this weekend. Saw three good races, if you ask me. I really enjoyed my time at the track. We got Talladega next week. Should be a fun one. Hopefully it's a fun one. Hopefully the rain stays away, but right now it does not look like that is going to be the case. So, um, But we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. So thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this live stream. I'll have my full week of video or whatever, weekend recap uh, at some point. So, yeah.